Hi everyone, and welcome to my channel. Lately, I've had the opportunity to photograph quite a bit on the Oregon coast. Now, if you've been out to the Oregon coast or are familiar with the Oregon coast, you'll know that one of the really prominent features of the landscape there are the sea stacks. When you photograph sea stacks and then process them in Photoshop or Lightroom, there's a very strong tendency to get halos around the stack where it extends up into the sky. And the same is actually true of photographing mountains against the sky. These halos, they can really be very distracting, very artificial looking, and they give a very distinctly digital feel to the image, which really isn't something that you'd like. So luckily, it's actually very easy to remove these halos. And in this video, I'm going to show you how. Also, I hope that you'll stick around to the end of the video because I have some comments I'd like to make after being on YouTube for just a few months about the community that I've met here. Anyway, let's get started. So this is an image I made on the Oregon coast. And let's zoom in and look at the edge of the sea stack and see what that looks like. And you can see here that there is some mild haloing around the edge of the sea stack. What causes this? Well, the prime candidate is sharpening. Because if you think about it, what sharpening does, it finds edges and it makes the darker side of the edge darker and the lighter side of the edge lighter in order to enhance the edge and make it look sharper. In a way, sharpening is really just enhanced edge contrast. So if we go way up on the sharpening, let's take a look at what happens. You can see that that haloing gets much, much worse. Likewise, if we were to go up on the radius, it's going to get even worse again. So let's put that back down to a more reasonable level. And you can see why you have to be very careful about over sharpening. Likewise, if, for example, we were to take this image into Nick Color Effect Pro, and this isn't a knock of Nick Color Effect Pro. In fact, I use this plugin quite a bit. I really enjoy it. But what I want to demonstrate is that it's not just edge contrast that can cause the problem if you're not careful. It's also tonal contrast. So this is the tonal contrast filter. Obviously, you know, for the sake of demonstration, I put the settings way, way up. But if you see a little bit of haloing and then we turn the tonal contrast on all the way and you can see that that's caused worsening of the haloing. So what can we do to fix this? Because even though I've shown you exaggerated examples of it by turning the sharpening way, way up or turning the tonal contrast way, way up, even regular processing can leave you with some halos that are distracting. So let's see about fixing this. So I'm going to show you two very easy ways to fix the problem. One using the brush tool and the other using the clone stamp tool. Plus, I'm going to show you the one thing that can go wrong and how to fix that as well. So here we are with our photo in Photoshop after Lightroom processing. And let's zoom in to see that halo. So here's the halo we were concerned about. Now, what I'm going to do first is to create a new blank layer. You can do that with keyboard shortcuts, or you can simply go to Layer, New, Layer. And there's our new layer, and it's blank. Now, we want to choose the Paintbrush tool. And as a default, the foreground color with the Paintbrush, paintbrush tool is black. The first trick here is that we want to change that. We don't want it to be black. We want it to be the color just outside that halo. So what we can do is double click on that foreground color 
it opens up the color picker and we can just sort of pick a color right near the halo and that will make the foreground color once we click OK it will make the foreground color that color that we chose now what we're going to do is we're going to come up to this edge and we are just going to slobber on some paint like we're kindergartners. We're not going to worry about selections. We're not going to worry about edges. We're going to make this simple and quick. But it looks horrible, right? Well, it looks horrible right now. But here's the trick. We want to make sure the layer we just painted on is selected. And you can see here that it is. And the default blending mode is normal. Now remember, the halo is caused by darkening of the dark side of the edge and lightening the light side of the edge. And so the edge where the halo is, is lighter than anything else. And if we go to our blending mode and change that blending mode to darker, it only makes things darker. The paint will only make things darker, and the darker thing and the thing that it's making darker is the white halo. So we click this, and you can see that where we painted, our halo is gone. And the stuff that we just smushed on that didn't look like it was gonna look good has disappeared. So that's really a quick and easy way to get rid of that halo. Now what can go wrong? I promised you I would tell you what could go wrong. So I'll leave this for the moment in darkened mode. And we had that blue color. It's still there. And let's paint over here. And you can see there's a problem because you can easily see the paint. Why? Because the color that we chose is darker than that white area of the sky. And so when in the darkened mode, you can see it because it's darker than the sky. Let's get rid of that by stepping back a step. There's a very nice answer that's quick and easy. Instead of using this color here, where the color changes dramatically, like in these clouds, we're going to once again open our color picker and we're going to pick a lighter color that's right over that area, like so. We'll click OK. You can see that switch to the new lighter color. And now, when we paint over that area, the halo is gone, and you can't see the paint. Once again, I'll turn our new layer off, and you can see the halo. And when I turn our new layer on, the halo disappears. Now, you know, the more areas you sample from as you go, the more accurate it's going to be. But you don't have to sample that much. I mean, very here in the cloud, there's a very dramatic change. So you want to sample there. But for example, I could have used this color all the way up here. And as we go, for example, you can use the same color all the way up here. And then from here to here, you can use the same color. So it really is a very simple and easy technique to get rid of that halo without making complex selections or painting with super fine brushes and taking a lot of time. Now that I've shown you how to fix the halo using the paintbrush tool, it's just as easy and maybe even easier to use the clone stamp tool. Let me show you how that's done. First of all, we're going to go and choose, instead of the paintbrush, we're going to choose our clone stamp. And we can see that right here. And now we're on the clone stamp tool. And much like we did before, we have our layer that's new and blank. And we're going to sample right outside. And actually, just to show you, I'm going to switch this back to normal. And we're going to sample just outside the halo by pressing the Alt and taking that sample. Now we're going to go and we're going to clone right over the edge. And you'll notice that the sample point that we're sampling from travels with our clone stamp, which is very helpful. 
And much like the paintbrush, we're just slathering it on and not worried about making edges. And in the same way, we can now go to the layer, make sure that layer is active, and drop down the blending mode and go to darken. And you can see, if I turn that layer on and off, that the halo is gone. Now, using the stamp tool is very helpful because the point you're sampling from goes along with your clone stamp so that you're constantly, in a sense, resampling the color that you're cloning. However, because it's always going to be a teeny bit off, you may reach an area of very marked contrast or change in color where the what's cloned onto the halo doesn't look right. But just as I mentioned with the paintbrush tool, we already know what to do. We just back up and we sample from a better area and continue painting. So that, in a nutshell, are two techniques that are very simple to use that don't require any advanced selection techniques or very fine painting or edge finding to get rid of a halo in Photoshop. Well, I do hope that you found this video useful and that you'll be able to utilize this technique to remove halos in your own work. Now, in the introduction, I had mentioned that I wanted to make a few comments about the community that I've met here on YouTube. I started YouTube really just a few months ago and was very uncertain as to who I would meet or what the kind of people were that were doing YouTube. And I have to say, I've been so pleasantly surprised at the community and the people that I've met here, both photographers and people who are interested in photography alike. I really want to thank you for commenting and participating in my videos. And I've enjoyed seeing your work as well as sharing some of my own work with you. Just as an example of what I mean, I follow fellow YouTuber Paul Ferrace's channel. And I had been planning to make this video for some time since I had been processing a lot of my Oregon Coast photographs. But he actually put out a video about using the clone stamp technique to eliminate halos. And I had commented that I was using the paintbrush technique. I had commented on his video that I was using the paintbrush technique and thinking of making a similar video, but that I put it away for a while. And his comment back to me was, no, why don't you make the video? And in the video, include the clone stamp technique as well and put them both into one video, and that'd be great. And, you know, this is exactly the kind of support that I'm talking about. I'd like to give uh, a shout out to him and his channel because I think you'd really enjoy it. He does not only processing videos, but also vlogs of the Florida landscape, as well as storm chasing and astrophotography. Really nice stuff. And I'm going to put a link to his channel in the video description below. I'm Howard, and my channel is about introducing viewers to photographers who inspire, to discussing all sorts of photographic topics, and enhancing creativity with Photoshop and Lightroom tutorials. And if those topics are of interest to you, I'd really appreciate your support of the channel by having you click on the subscribe button below. We'll see you next time.